where are we today? Is this the Caribbean, Indian Ocean, maybe another tropical sea? It's actually Lake Malawi in the South Central African country of Malawi. Look, there are few countries in the world, let alone in Africa, that have anything like this. And it's just an example of one of the treasures of this country that I want to talk about today. This lake, Lake Malawi, is really the centerpiece of Malawi, and it's so untouched. It's so still pristine, still traditional. Fishing is done here, small villages. It's not overwhelmed by big tourism, and it's really suited for ecotourism, for really cool lodges and places for people to come to learn about the lake and its amazing ecology because it has the most fish species of any lake on the entire planet, so it's a really special place not just for Malawi but really for the world and just imagine this lake probably looks not much different than it did thousands of years ago. This may be the best way to enjoy this lake just so chilled out. And below the water are some of the most amazing fishes in the world. It's like an aquarium. On paper, Malawi is one of the world's poorest nations. The average Malawian earns less than $2 a day. But in my time here, I'm beginning to think that, wait, that doesn't tell the full story. This place is actually rich in opportunity and in the human spirit. So, to learn more about this country, I met up with Lombola, a Malawian consultant and investor. Malawi is a small country. Yeah. And mostly when you talk about Malawi, some people, they think about Mali, <laughs> or you know how people think about one of those uh, m countries yes m country mozambique mozambique so yeah. um, malawi is a landlocked country but it's, it has got interesting features yeah so one of the most interesting features is the lake yeah i found it endlessly fascinating to watch the action out on the lake and watching what the fishermen were doing the rhythm of their day particularly as they prepared for night fishing what do i do though what what's what do i invest in what if i'm let's, let's say it's the lake what do i invest in yeah so on top of the list, when you talk about investment in Malawi, is tourism. Okay. So tourism is a big thing uh, because it's an area that is untapped. Uh, for instance, if I ask you how did you find Cape Maclea, you'd say we found it by accident. Yeah, yeah. But you look at it, you say it's beautiful. How, how in the world does this place exist? Right. On this lake, village life is unfolding all around you, and it makes for indelible images. So beside the lake, we yeah. have uh, Mulanje Mountain. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very big and it's beautiful. Uh, the mountain itself uh, is surrounded by estates, tea estates, tea and coffee estates. Oh, wow. And it's very, very beautiful. That's, by the way, that, the next time I come to Malawi, yes, that's the, what I want to hike. Because it looks like a European mountain range. It's yes. very, and it's also got the highest peak, I think, in southern Africa. It's like almost 10,000 feet high. So maybe, so maybe the first thing there's like, come here and be a tourist and kind of take in the sites and then you'll see yes opportunities right yeah you see a lot of yeah. opportunities yeah, so yeah. we also have got a lot of game reserves and national parks so for example here this is a national park yeah, this yeah, is Lake yeah, Malawi yeah, national yeah, park yeah. but we also have got other national parks that are for the big five uh, which is what the, which the, is uh, the lion the tiger you know, the, the elephant. Uh, elephant buffalo tigers are in India <laughs> yeah. Unless they snuck into Malawi. Yeah. <laughs> but the lion, the, the big the big animals, you, yes, yes, you yes. think about Africa. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Almost unknown is that Malawi has Central Africa's largest concentration of ancient rock art. More than 100 sites close to the capital a long way. My friend Jeff and I found two of them with a guide that was tough to reach, and we were among the first visitors up here in months. What would you like to visit in Malawi? Drop a comment below and tap that subscribe button. Under British colonial rule, which ended in 1964, Malawi was known as Nyasaland, which means Lakeland, and it was famed for its tea and tobacco. Scottish missionary explorer David Livingstone is closely tied to Malawi's history. In fact, Malawi's second city, Blantyre, is named after Livingstone's hometown, and Scotland and Malawi still maintain a close relationship. 
Today, Malawi is run by a guy named Lazarus, who literally came back from the dead politically to overcome a stolen election overturned by the high court and won the rematch in 2020. I really admire his ambitions of the country and his surprising southern accent. We've got to do something so that we do have a productivity agenda that gets everyone out of the poverty trap. Lazarus is busy trying to crank up Malawi's economy. He's recently signed deals with Kenya and Mozambique and just released an export strategy. Zambia and Tanzania are logical markets and so is Mozambique on the Indian Ocean. And it's this close. The field behind us, Mozambique. Over here, Malawi. Alas, the horizon is not all sunny for Malawi. And one reason is the country relies almost totally on wood for fuel. Trees are vanishing and so is the groundwater that trees help to preserve. And here's a product you'll see sold on roadsides in Malawi and other countries. Is there a charcoal seller around? Yeah, I think that. So we're with our friend Jordan here who's just checked with the local seller. And Jordan, what's the, what's the, how much is this uh, charcoal uh, going to cost me? Uh, the big one from here to that side, it's uh, 4500 Okay. Uh, this one, uh, the small ones are 3,500. So 4,500 Malawian kwacha. Yes. That's about six to seven US dollars. Just six to seven US dollars for all of this charcoal. And how many kilograms? Uh, they are around uh, like uh, 60 kgs. And, 60 uh, kgs. Yeah, this one, they are around uh, like the smaller ones. So 60 kgs, that's about 100 and... Uh, 30 pounds roughly 130 pounds no more than seven dollars no more than seven u.s dollars and you can get your cooking oil the problem here is that this is what is causing forests to disappear in malawi out in these wide open spaces you wouldn't guess that malawi's population has almost doubled in the past 20 years putting pressure on forest water on education, health care, food security, you name it. As in other parts of Africa, cities and towns, well, they're growing. And in Malawi, it's quite the same. As you travel around, you'll see things like this. Here's a fairly typical town. Agricultural dealers, uh, quite a bit of commerce going on. There's other retail. You'll see a hardware store pop up. And uh, the red kiosk is for mobile money and for topping up your airtime. And out at the edge of town, uh, you see car repair, truck repair, uh, depots. And at the very end of the town, a billboard indicating there is a consumer market here. And Malawi could use a whole lot more electricity. Only about 10 to 15 percent of Malawians are actually tapped into uh, power. And of course, if you're going to grow the economy, you've got to have more electricity. In a country with as much sunshine as Malawi, solar is clearly one of the solutions. This American-backed project is one of the largest such power plants that's adding new uh, capacity into the national grid. Also, community solar, small scale for schools, for individual homes, and for small users and, and businesses. Malawi is a nation of small farmers, and to really get the economy moving, you've got to get farms scaled up and more productive. That's a top priority of the president and a big opportunity. Anything else that comes to mind that like we Americans wouldn't even think about? The other thing that... Uh, that has potential and there's other opportunities is real estate. Ah, real okay. estate? Yes. So okay. because we have a lot of uh, Malawians that are graduating into the middle class, oh. some people they are, they are graduating from universities, they are looking for, um, for houses. Okay. Okay. So because the, most people cannot access a mortgage in Malawi, so they have to build using their own money. And the alternative is to, to rent a house or a home. Okay. So real estate is another area that, that has potential. Right now, that's where most of the Chinese people have invested in. So the, ah. the Chinese have, have come in and they've built hotels, they're building commercial uh, office, uh, office buildings. So real estate is another big thing. And we have other nationalities that are coming in to even purchase land so that they can build a real estate. Wow, okay. And sure enough, back in the big city, what did I find right along this busy road as I passed by? Well, here it is, a brand new office and shopping development. 
Malawi's as much about profits, here's a Chinese hotel and shopping center, as profits. This guy is literally everywhere in Malawi. So, Lambola, all right, Americans love slogans, you know, they, they need like bumper stickers on their car. You know, we don't, we don't, have, we have very short attention spans, so we need like a quick little thing to remember Malawi. So you said the warm heart of Africa, which I think is absolutely true. That Malawi is a very, very friendly place. I'm thinking Malawi, Malawi. But what, 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 what are some other slogans we can come up with for this country? I like, I like Malawi. <laughs> it's nice. It's good, right? Uh, yeah. Hidden treasure. Hidden treasure. Okay. Or something. Uh, we like treasure too. That's just, <laughs> just some secret, a little mystery to that. Mulebonji, which means basically how are you in Chichewa, and the, the other key word, zikomo. Thank you. Thank you, Malawi.